today is Tuesday, March the 16th, 2021. And our call-in number is 563-999-3581. And press 1, and that puts you in the queue to talk to us. We'd love to hear your comments and questions because that makes this your show. Welcome, Michael. We've already got two hands up. Wow, so things are rock and rolling. Well, that's cool. Well, let me make an announcement before we uh, we get to the hands. Maybe the hands are in response to my announcement. I just did something that I've not done before, and I'm going actually we're going to turn it into a little contest. Uh, Deanie and I did some energy field work and breath work this morning, and as a result of that, I got a whole. Um, presentation for today's show. And so I actually sketched it out, and you've seen it, Jeannie, and, uh, just on a, a half a piece of paper. And I could actually turn it into easily a four-hour presentation, but I probably won't do that. It'll probably only be 15 or 20 minutes after we read from the book. But for those who are participating in the Codependence to Interdependence Intensive, if you go to your WhatsApp, WhatsApp uh, link for the codependence intensive, I just posted a picture of what that page looks like. And so I'm going to challenge you to, uh, to take a look at that on WhatsApp through your, uh, your private link for the intensive and have a look at the picture. And the person who gets closest to being able to tell me what everything on the page means is going to get a free copy of Aramaicisms. So that four-hour video conversation with myself and Dale and Hoffman. So if you're in the uh, codependence to interdependence communication practicum, then, you know, the last one or this one, you've got a private link to the WhatsApp group for that group. Go take a look at the picture. Call in, see what you can tell me about it. And let's see, maybe that's what our hands are about. Let's go for it, sweetie. Okay. The first one is area code 602. You're on the air. Who do we have? Hi, Jeannie. This is Cecilia in Phoenix. Welcome, young lady. Good to hear your voice. Can you hear me okay? You are loud and clear. Awesome. Thank you so much for your work, Michael. It's unbelievable. It's, it's otherworldly is just what I want to say. But I also just did a worksheet this morning, so... I wanted to comment on that. Can you can you hear me? Uh, he said, "Yeah, he he's muted." He said, "Go for it." You're you're loud and clear. I had I had my mute button pushed. I apologize, but I can hear you loud and clear, and I'm delighted it's impacting you the way it is. Uh, I know that with the work of Jeannie, there's been a whole new level of work being done between Jeannie and I, and yes. with what's open, it's like it. a whole new I perspective can feel it. tonight. I yeah, <laughs> I knew you. I, I started work with you back in Dayton, uh, uh, in oh God, twenty years ago, and I couldn't get it. I just couldn't. I, I just couldn't get. Not because of you, because of the level that I was at. So I'm Gotta back have the again. Brain cells. Yep. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, I did see a video Please. of you yep. saying that it takes like, I don't know, decades to try to get this. To get this. I don't know if you said decades. Okay. My my take is that the, the average person, when they're first exposed to it, if they actually engage in the work and do it, it takes five to ten years to really comprehend where it's going. It took me 20. And what the possibilities <laughs> are. And, 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 and I've been doing it for 50 years, and I'm still just <laughs> starting on a whole okay. new levels to comprehend what's possible and where it's going. Oh, isn't that awesome? I mean, it's really good. It's not like, okay, you graduate from eighth grade and you don't have to ever do eighth grade again. But, you know... Anyway, sometimes so, I feel like I'm still in kindergarten after 50 years. <laughs> okay, cool. You become like a child, right? Like a newborn babe, you know. I mean, that's just it. to have that's the, the mind, idea. the that's open the part mind. Of us. Yeah. Yeah, that's the part of us we need to reclaim. So, so here's the situation: is that if we have to to try to do this worksheet very quickly here, uh, my situation is I I. I work, actually, I, I pet sit for a guy at noon for free. And in exchange, he barters. He's a, a paint professional painter, and 
he owns three properties that he rents, Airbnbs. I also clean for him, but I do get paid for that. But but uh, we're neighbors. We're you know we became friends of our love of dogs first of all, and um, he's married. He's got a you know he's got a family, and he's so he's a neighbor. And so uh, my love of dogs, he can c- c- kind of tell that because I I'm always walking them. And he asked me for so to help him, and I volunteered to walk his dogs at noon um so the dog's not home alone all the time just as a neighbor and and so he he felt like oblig not obligated and in his heart he felt like he wanted to like if i if my roof needed repairs he would do it for free and all that kind of stuff so that's what it's been for the last four years but as it's lately it's become a little bit too too close for comfort for me so what happened is, right now he's going to paint two rooms of my house in exchange for the work that I do for him for nothing. And so so uh, he's coming up from behind me really gently, nothing, and he puts his hands on my waist, and it throws me off. I get into confusion, and I, I get into fear. I can't say anything. I'm paralyzed. And and I uh, part of me is like, well, I can't say anything because then I can't clean his Airbnbs, and I do make money doing that. So anyway, so I have uh, my feelings are fear, uneasiness, you know, um, and and all that. And what came out of this worksheet is that obviously I am doing your work, and I know that it's some reality in me. So when I got to, and I and I don't want to punish him. But I feel like I'm going to punish feeling these feelings that are coming up in me, the incredible fear that he's going to come over Thursday and this is going to happen again. So, so, so I did this and I did this worksheet and I got to um, uh, the punishment thing was uh, on one E was uh, not owning and being responsible for this reality and instead um, pushing my feelings down and it's just going to happen again then so who gets to be punished is me so so then i uh you know i'm going through the symptoms of healing i choose that which is the confusion i had when i started this you know like i don't know this seems real but it's it's i know it's it's something in my mind that's not true okay so uh all right, so I got to, uh, it's a repeating pattern in my life. Not that I have this happen every day, but it, but, and I stay away from men. I really, truly do because it ha- when I do come out of the shadow and, and get, you know, I started sharing with him my healing about two years after I knew him. And he seemed to be a good listener, and I said, please tell me not to share if this is uncomfortable to you. And and he he would listen. I didn't share a lot. I didn't share in depth. It mostly had to do with a lot of sexual abuse that I had as a child. Okay, so so um, anyway, I was unsure that I should share it, but you know he just he didn't ask me to share, but he would be listening. And so uh, and now he's at the point where when he came over the other day to clean up. I mean, to see what the rooms were like and what I needed to do to clean them up so he could paint them. He would come up from behind me and put his hands on my waist and move me maybe a little bit over to this way or that way so that he could get through or whatever. And I'm not comfortable with that. So what is a repeating pattern in my life is that when I was four years old, my grandfather took his teeth out and French kissed me. When I was 11, my father, quote unquote, taught me about the birds and the bees and had me, and I hope you're, this isn't too graphic. I, I, I want to ask you that, that I not share if it's too graphic. Okay. We'll hold the space. Huh? We're breathing with you. We're breathing okay. with you and hold the space. He, he had me at 11 years old sit on his lap and he said, come here, I'm going to teach you about the birds and the bees because your mom's a prude. And she doesn't like sex, and I want you to learn. I want you to learn about it. So he directed me how to feel him up. Okay. 
and I'm very naive, 11 year old. And when I got to the point part where I didn't want to feel him up, he, I, I jumped off his lap and I ran away and he started screaming, you're a whore, you're, you're a drug addict, you're a whore. And I didn't even know the words. Okay. I'm, I'm like, okay. Right. And I then, and then, and then my mother came at me not long after that. And she, 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 uh, got in my face and she said, it's your fault. You turn your brother and your father on and yada, da, 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 and you didn't. And I, 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 I was frozen. I was totally frozen by everything in my family with confusion and not understanding. And so I've been in um, Sex Addicts Anonymous. I mean, I'm sorry, not that. Uh, uh, survivors of Sexual Abuse Anonymous, 12 sex groups. I've had sponsors. I've right. worked through it, God knows, in 2012. Anyway, um, I still have this victim story, obviously that this is coming up is what came up on this worksheet. And I want to let go of this right. victim reality. So I, I did, you know, um, ask Ruka and, and, and um, Rachma and Kuba, I mean, and, and, uh, and asked them to restore my mind to love. Now, I believe that we are all love, even, even my father, even my grandfather, who are pedophiles. My father told me my, that my grandfather was a pedophile took in pregnant women, and when they had, their babies were born, he beat down their door and tried to rape their babies. So so uh, uh, I couldn't talk about this my whole life. Are you kidding me? Anyway, so, I mean, uh, I've talked about it in, with, in my um, Survivors of Sexual Abuse people, my sponsor. That was in 2012, and I talked to it in my adult children of alcoholics group and all that, not at that level, right. though, but with my sponsor there. And, you know, here's the deal is I did not know Colin Tipping was, uh, was learned from you, okay, until a recent video, right. which was very interesting, okay, because, right. because I felt I, I'm – I'm I'll tell you where I'm at right now, and I, I have been a, a scene – a Nasserina scene for 26 years, but I didn't want to dive into it until last year. And so I'm, you know, I'm part of the religion now. Okay, so, so uh, I understand your um, y- Yeshua and all that. Okay, and all the teachings and all that. Okay, from where I'm coming from, and I and I get we are all love. Okay. We're all sparks of the, of the of the of the divine. So, so, so. But uh, I we were doing a he we were doing a um, a service an Essene service and um, online and the guy was talking about forgiveness and if and also in some of the teachings it says that um, if your house is ruled by forgiveness. Anxiety and depression can't leave there. I live there, sorry. So when I heard that that saying, okay, of Yeshua, I I I um I knew that I was riddled by anxiety and and depression my whole life, and I knew I had to work on forgiveness. Now, I know I have all of your tapes, your CDs, your everything, okay. And I've listened to them before, but for some reason I looked up radical because it said radical forgiveness in in the um, person who does the uh, the the the, uh, the Essene services online, and so or on Zoom, and so 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 he said radical forgiveness, and I I called him and I said. I found something online for radical forgiveness, and I sent him a link of you, and I sent, and I said, I want to know what you mean by radical forgiveness, and he just simply wrote me back and said, just forgive, and I thought, okay, maybe he just doesn't know who I am, and it's, he doesn't, can't get into how deep it is, I don't know, but, you know, of course, you know, most people think forgiveness is forgiving somebody else. Okay, so so I just said, that's fine. He gave me a, 
a simple answer. But call and tipping, actually, uh, I did come back to your work because of that. But call and tipping, I came to when I put it online, radical forgiveness, because I wanted to know what it meant. And call and tipping came up, and I, I did his worksheet, and I heard him talk about sexual abuse on a video online. And he said, you have a victim story. Twelve-step groups just per- perpetuate the victim story. Okay, so then I'm like, oh, my God, they do. So, so then I'm like, okay, so, okay, I get that. And I'm, I want to release the, and, clear, and clean my mind okay. from the victim story. Anyway, okay. so my so goal, gonna, my goal. Let me interrupt you. Yes. Is that okay? Sure. Go, go ahead and offer, and tell me what your goal is. And then let's, my, uh, my goal you're now. Really in your story. Yeah. You were just you, said were my you goal. Just saying I was what, really what was in my story. Say? Okay. Anyway, uh, it's my, my exact goal is to be healed of the victim reality. Okay. Cool. Well, I'll join you in that, in achieving that goal. Thank you. And have we got some tools for you? Okay. I know you do. I'm, I've got one in front of me. Cool. Okay, so that's one, and that'll be an important one to work with, but there are two others yeah. that I'm okay. going to suggest that you that you use. And okay. they may be new for you, or they may be something that over the years that you've worked with my work that you've run into before. But okay. the first tool I'm going to suggest is a tool we call a mind shifter. Are you familiar with yes. mind shifters? Yes, I am. I was in a workshop workshop with you with that. But I need help with that. Is is that on your website? Because I don't have a video on that one. No, we're going to do it right now. Oh, awesome. That's what we're here for. Okay. Let me first of all define a mind shifter. A mind shifter is a thought about an issue in your life around which you have negative thoughts. And it's the opportunity to surface, process, and release the negative thoughts. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. Now, when you recognize that the mind works through resonance, if I say don't think about the color of your car, what's going to move in your mind but the color of your car? Yes. Right? Um, because my, you know, my voice, actually I've never spoken a word, you've never spoken a word, nobody has. We have this little thing we call a voice box. It's actually a frequency machine. And we know how to cause it to vibrate air molecules. No sound comes out of our mouths. Sound is something that's generated in the brain by the brain. The only thing that comes out of our mouths is an energy that moves air molecules. There's okay. our, those air molecules go to an ear on the other end, and there's a little sensitive piece of skin there, a membrane, that in response to the movement of the air called molecules, causes that little drum called an eardrum to move. There's some bones connected to it, and when those bones move, they create an electrical frequency Mm -hmm. that then resonates or causes brain cells to fire. So that's, so resonance. So if if we can come up with the right mind shifter, here's what's gonna happen. We're gonna ask you to take a piece of paper, draw Uh a line down the middle of the page. Right. On the left-hand side of the page, I'm going to ask you to set a page up now. On the left-hand side of the page, I'm going to ask you to write the mind shifter that I'm going to give you when we're ready for that. And then uh, I'm going to ask you to take a period of at least four hours. Okay. Your phone is off. Your okay. door is locked. You're totally in your own space and stay focused, okay. i.e., you know, if you have to go pee or something, go and do that. But otherwise, you don't go eat, you don't go make phone calls, you don't remember that you should have written a letter to your grandmother 10 years ago and you're going to go write it now. You just stay with the writing for at least four hours. Okay. And so when you write the mind shifter, it's going to resonate some brain cells. And what we want to do is to start a brain dump so that everything in resonance with this mind shifter ends up flowing out onto the page. Okay. And in four hours, you're going to reach some deep unconscious parts of your mind. Okay. So the mind shifter, I'm going to ask you to write it down now. We'll go on the left-hand side of the page. Is this. Mm -hmm. All of the men in my life. Okay. Have always appreciated me. Are you breathing? Uh, 
okay. Are you breathing? Only from laughing. <laughs> okay, okay. Have always appreciated me, comma. Okay. For speaking up <laughs> and asking them to keep their hands to themselves. Now, if my guess is correct, the first thing that your mind thinks in that regard is BS. Who are you trying to kid? Would that be accurate? And you're probably holding your breath. No, hang on. I Actually, I'm finishing writing. Uh, okay. So what came up is a complete uh, release of sadness or something. Uh, Say it again. Your, your my, phone just cut out a little bit. I'm sorry. It was a bad phone. So I what came up is this heat through my eyes and the water pouring out of my eyes. Oh, write that on the page. What so now your body's already starting to detox okay. from the assaults that you've had. So wait, we'll write it on what side of the page? On the right-hand side of the page. So now oh. we're going to write down every thought that comes, every sensation that comes, yeah. everything that happens in your body, everything that happens in your mind. You want a detail on the right-hand side of the page. So right. on the right-hand side of the page, you write, my eyes are already weeping and moving and whatever else the sensations are and or the thoughts. Okay. Okay. And usually you'll go through thoughts like, well, that's a lie. Men have never appreciated oh, yeah. me speaking up. They've it's always abused me for it. Say again? I'm sorry. I wanted to hear what you said. Oh, uh, go ahead and say what you said, please. Oh, my first thought was, uh, I wish. <laughs> I wish. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Kind of the same thing as BS. Okay, so that's what. So write down. I wish. Okay. So now I want you to spend at a point where you can block off four hours of time. And just sit and write that. Sit and write what? I just did. Okay. And now what you're going to do is you're going to take that piece of paper and maybe okay. a whole notebook, and okay. you're going to write that for four hours. Write about what the sensation and thought that came up. Write about anything and everything that happens to you while you're writing. And when you run out of things to write, when you run out of things to write, I want you to write the mind shifter again. And then write what comes up. Write the the mind mind shifter shifter? again. Oh, I see. Same mind shifter. And you're going to keep going. Nothing comes up after four hours. hours? I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, it'll come up. It'll come up. It's already started. So we, we don't have any problem with that. There's going to be a lot. So after four hours of writing this, and what happens after four hours of writing? Okay. Once you've written what for happens? at least, slow down. Once you've written okay. for at least four hours. Okay. And you feel like you're reaching a comfort point or a completion point. Okay. Then stop. Go to something to eat. Go for a walk. Rest a little bit. Whatever. Then uh-huh. go back to it and start to look at consciously what you've written. When you're writing, you don't want to censor it. If there's language, if the, you know, whatever comes up, you just want to put it on the page. Uh-huh. Even if it's things that you say, oh, well, I would never think that or say that, there it is. Put it on the page. Okay. And then once you've taken an intermission, mm-hmm. go back and sit with it in your notebook and uh-huh. look at how many things are there there that I need to do worksheets on. Okay. How much work do I have to do on what just surfaced? Okay. And there's going to be a ton of it. Yeah. Okay? Yep. So that's the first tool that I'm going to suggest to you. So, so let's say when it comes to, let's say the first thing that come up, came up was, I wish. Yeah. So then you have a goal for men oh. to honor and appreciate you for speaking up. So I'm yes. going to keep them, their hands to themselves. So you go to a worksheet. And so what am I going to write? Well, I'm going to write about the time that I wanted to speak up to my father. I wish he would have listened to me. And my goal in number three is going to be I wish my father had listened to me. I wish that Charlie, Bill, Mary, whoever came along. So do whatever worksheets you need to do there. And as you go through the list, look at 
each situation that you've uncovered from your unconscious because that's what we're doing. We're opening the unconscious mind. Okay. Just start looking at it and start using the other tools that you've got. You know, whatever tools okay. you've got in your lives, the ones you've gotten from me, the ones you got from from uh, uh, Rattle for Forgiveness, whoever from the uh, scene, wh- whatever tools you've got. Uh-huh. Now uh-huh. I'm going to go to work on these things until I clean this totally and completely out of my mind. So that'll be, you know, there, there's a, a combination. There are two things that have to happen in healing. One is the undoing process, and uh-huh. the other is the strengthening process. So this is the tool I'm going to suggest that in concert with the forgiveness worksheet, you utilize for the undoing part. Okay. Okay. Any other questions or thoughts about that before I move just to the one, other tool? Right now I can't do it as when I get right off the phone. So just, oh, well, no, when, just when you can. You know, maybe it's going to be oh, tomorrow afternoon you can walk out that oh, time. Right. Can I find out more information about uh, uh, mind shifters than this so that I can get clearer? Yeah, I'm here to do that for you right now. Yes. Oh, I, mean, I, mean, okay. I mean, you don't, you, you oh, don't have okay, the video let me go to watch, over it so, then. I mean, I spend more time with it, but that's what I'm here to do with you right now. Okay, so I have another question then. So upon completing yeah. the, uh, the, the uh, anything that comes up from the first mind shifter, all, my, all the men in my life have always appreciated me. I see the goal. I wish, uh, uh, and, and then, uh, but, but, but. Just write, just write without censoring for four hours straight. Absolutely. Or, just let it flow. And then, you want to do and then come up. back and then and then ask uh, uh, how uh, and sit with it, figure out how many worksheets will come up that I have to do, at least get an idea. And then uh, and then the the other question that I need to get clarity about is, uh, then I go do the 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 uh, the the thought that I wish, Please. okay, that I wish men treated that uh, honored that I spoke up, and then, um, and then do a. Ooh, I wish my dad would have do a. Uh, what am I doing? A worksheet until you might do one, I, ten, two, a hundred worksheets. I don't know. It sounds like there's going to be a lot of worksheets. Of what comes up with I wish the goal? I wish my dad would have listened well, to me. Speak up. So. So when you do a worksheet, the core of the worksheet is in step number three, where you enter, enter, identify a goal that you have. Okay. And then the core of the forgiveness process is the canceling of that goal and processing out whatever surfaces in response to it. Right. Okay. So you may look at that four hours of writing, and you may have two years of, of work to do. Yeah. I don't know. And you start doing it. And it might look like, you know, 12 worksheets. It might look like 200. It might look like 2,000. I don't know what's going to be uncovered. It's going to be some pretty heavy stuff, I suspect. Yeah. Well, what was the work? And so you do that for... work as long as it takes to do that work. Oh, but, but wishing my, my doing a worksheet on, I wish my dad would have listened to me, that's, that's mm-hmm. included. That's not something separate. That would be one of the worksheets. I'm, that's the first worksheet I'm suggesting you to do. Oh, oh, I see. Okay. So that'll be All right, one, that'll be the first thing, and, and then you want to go through everything that you've written and do I, I isolate and identify every goal that's on that okay. four hours of writing that you need to start to cancel and clean up in your mind. Oh, everything I see that it say. points to. So that's just uh, yes. the first. I just suggested the first worksheet you'll be doing. Oh no, that's fine. So I have one other question, and then I'll, I'll let anybody else that wants to get on get on. And, and oh, we're not finished it. yet. We got another whole thing to do. So you, you've okay, got but as much I have time a question. as you need. Okay. Go for it. Okay. So when the guys, we've got Thursday and for Thursday, this Thursday and Friday scheduled four hours in the morning, four hours each morning for him to come by and paint. Mm-hmm. Should I just be sitting there doing a worksheet while he's here? <laughs> Well, remember I said there are two parts to the process. One okay. is the undoing part. Right. There's the start of the undoing part, this whole assignment right. with the worksheets and all. The other part is the strengthening part. So we've got a different right. tool to strengthen you to handle that sort of circumstance. Oh, thank yeah. you. Yeah. Huh. Strengthening. So the second tool is called responsibility communication. 
Oh, yeah. I got that. And, and actually, oh, okay, perfect. Good. Well, that'll be perfect. <laughs> and, and I was going to say, you know, if you want to get more information on, if you've got all the videos. Uh-huh. Uh, the, oh, do you hear what I think you said the, or something? It's called that. Is that it? Communication. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Okay, thanks. Yeah. But but on the topic of the mind shifters, there's also uh, mind shifters and introduction to still point breathing. Do you have that okay. video? No, I need it. Well, no, not necessarily. I mean, I just explained the process, but if oh. you wanted a, a deeper uh, focus on it, it's on that video. And or you could go to the website and order it. Uh, you can either order a physical copy of it or we now have them all in digital format. So if you just order yeah. it, we'll send you a link out right away. You can watch it. Awesome. But That's it's fine. not a necessity. You've got the tool down pat. Okay. I'm just realizing that we've got them digitally, so you could do okay. it, that if you wanted to. All right. Okay. So now, the next thing I'm going to suggest that you do is that you go to our website, or actually, Jeannie's probably already put the link in the uh, in the uh, uh, notes for today. And okay. Jeannie, I'm trying to remember. Did we put there was a woman who was in India and experienced some sexual abuse from a therapist there, and she did a responsibility communication letter. Did we put that on the website? I don't remember. Uh, you recall? I'll try to I'll try to find it and put a link to it. I don't think we put it as a separate one, but I'll look and see. I'm on your website okay. right now. Would that would I be able to find it? Well, let's leave that. That'll take more time than we want to take here. We want to give oh, you yeah. as much time as we can. So okay. so we'll leave that in Jeannie's hands. Here, what She'll is this responsibility it. communication rules? Is that it? Responsibility. Yeah. Well, that's that's an outline. That's an outline for the tool that I'm suggesting, yes. Oh, I see. That'll be the outline. And I then see, there are, there's, there's a letter. Uh, oh. Actually, there were two letters. There's one from a young man who's doing responsibility communication with his father around mm-hmm. alcohol. That will be yeah. a good model for you. Okay. And the second one is a woman who uh, was experiencing sexual abuse from a therapist, and she right. did responsibility communication with him around that. That would oh, be see. another excellent model for That's you. That's awesome. So, Thank you. How, how so will I get those? You, uh, those? What, we'll leave that in the hands. She'll do, come back to us. Do you receive texts? On, do you receive texts on the number that you called in on? No, I'd have to give you another number. Okay, well, um, just... Uh, drop, drop to you a note. Yeah. And, uh, a note. Okay, I'll text you email. Jay. Is, Okay. J E A email I E Wigan. Yes. And then I'll send you links. J E N And then I E. No, just one N. No, no. Okay. J E A N I E at Wigan dot org. I got it. And then I'll I'll send you links. Okay. Okay. We do have that other letter on the site though, honey. I have not found it yet. No, the other letter that's on there is the one for Joey. Okay. Well, if it's not there, I have it in my computer. We'll find it. And we'll get it on there, and we'll get a link to her. So they will be okay, the models sure. for you. They'll be the models for you writing a responsibility communication letter to him. And, and it's actually such a sweet, perfect setup. I acknowledge you as a creator. I, I suspect you've probably watched uh, our video on creating consciously. Have you? Yes, I've watched them all, Michael, many times. I fall asleep with them on. Okay. <laughs> so I'm not okay. kidding. <laughs> Perfect. Well, here's my acknowledgement for you. You've got someone who perhaps represents a threat to you in your core issue, which is sexual abuse. But mm-hmm. he's not a sexual abuser, has not become right. a sexual abuser. Right. But he's resonated all and brought it up to the surface for you. How perfect yeah. is that? No, it is a gift. I am telling myself that, yeah. yeah. And he sounds like someone who's there willing to listen and will be the perfect sounding board for you to do responsibility communication with. Awesome. To t- totally, completely clean this up. I mean, what a perfect yeah. Oh, my God. Thank you for putting so I hold that context. Space. Yeah. 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 And I'll hold the space that he is, is just as gentle as you've put him forward is when you share with him about what's going on for you. 
And the idea of responsibility communication, you know, most people think when a reality shows up in their mind, i.e., I'm feeling threatened sexually, yeah. as in this situation, most people right. take that and project it and say, you really threatened me sexually. What do you suppose the average person is going to do if I say that to them? They're going to turn tail and run. They're going to get angry. They're going to be defensive. Whatever happens. You don't yeah. have to do any of that. You can do responsibility okay. communication with him and say, hey, Bill, I have an issue. You know, I'm just going to kind of model a short form of what that might look like. Okay. And, and if you'd like, between now and Thursday, if you'd like to send Jeannie a copy of it, either she or I will give you some feedback on it to refine it. So okay. it would look something like this. Gee, Bill, I have an issue that's come up for me in our interaction. I really appreciate the fact that you've been a friend to me and that you're supporting me and doing this painting, and, and I get to support you and take care of your dog. And it's really wonderful. But something came up for me the other day, and what I want to do is heal what's going on in me around that. So you've yeah. kind of set a framework up. That would be the first step in the working okay. And commit yourself to communicating about this with him Uh and then the next the next step will be to lay out the mechanical facts of what happened this is kind of the instruction set on responsibility communication lay out the mechanical facts you know i was in the front room and you were explaining something to me about blah 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 whatever the situation was and you came over and you put your hands on my hips and moved me aside and what came up for me was feeling threatened about being sexually abused again. I have a history of that. So what that brought up for me. So, so right now you're not saying anything about what he did aside from the mechanical facts that right. he put his hands on your hip and move you over. There's no accusation. There's no nothing. Right. It's total uh-huh. ownership. And, man, that brought terror up for me or that brought hatred up for me or that brought fear or maybe all three and here's yeah. why when i was a child and you shared that with him already so he's already privy yeah. to the knowledge what a perfect setup uh-huh. and so what i'm in what i'm asking for is your support in healing this do you have any ideas okay wait and if he doesn't have any ideas that might be the space for you to say well there's this forgiveness process the worksheet process that I use, and seeing as how you've triggered that for me and I'm feeling safe enough to speak it and clean it up, I feel like you're the perfect person to hold the space for me and support me going through that. And maybe you'll have to explain a little bit about holding the space Uh and have him sit there while you do the worksheet with him as the object of attention. Not with him there, right? Absolutely with him there. That's the request. Do the worksheet with him there? Yes, ma'am. So he's going to go through the worksheet with me? Well, here's here's what I'm I'm suggesting. And, of course, this is just a suggestion. You don't have to do any of it. But it sounds, again, like the perfect setup. Okay. So here's here's what the request would look like. So, So that's what's up for me is this terror or this hatred or this rage or this fear or this sadness or this grief or or all of you whatever is true for you to lay that out on the table with him and uh-huh. and what i'm understanding about the healing process and you know what one of my mentors michael rice has suggested that i do right. is ask you to be here to support me with it so what i'd like to do uh-huh. is i'd like to take this this worksheet and i'm just going to bounce it off of you i'm going to do the steps and, and maybe you'll do two or three or four, five worksheets, this same worksheet, before you ever do this with him. Okay. But ask him to sit there at the table with you as you fill in the blanks. I, who am love, feel. Okay, let's do terror. Uh-huh. And yes. what's the situation? You know, what happened? Mm-hmm. Well, I was right. standing over in the corner, and Bill came over, put his hands on my hips, and moved me over. And what came up for me was all this fear about being sexually abused and this fear about speaking up to men. Right. So just uh-huh. explain to it. Fill in the worksheet. Go through it. And, then, and yeah. you know, maybe explain it to me. And here's how the forgiveness process works. Now that I see that I have a goal for you to be a safe space for me, okay. that's what I'm requesting from you. But at the same time, men have never been a safe space for me. So thank you mm-hmm. for being here. And now I'm going to cancel my goal for you to be a safe space. Okay. And as you do, 
with him being there present with you, breathing and holding the space, which I suspect from what you've said, he'll be happy and integritous enough to do, then the floodgates are probably going to open. Uh, and it will be a perfect space for all of this old trauma to be let loose. Yes, yes. All right. What a perfect setup. You are a genius. No, I, I, I say the creator is a genius to set this up with him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, your willingness is, is awesome. Yeah. Uh, okay, this is awesome. Oh, my God, I can't believe I can actually. No, I, I choose to believe that I'm actually going through this in a way that's going to be healing. Yeah, and, you know, there are lots of men who are delighted to be that space and that support. Uh, you know, oh, and I, I know he is. I know he is. I, and that's why it throws me off because I know Perfect. he was safe enough to open up to after two years and yep. opening up a little tiny so bit at a time. So he's got the history. He's been the yes. space. He's been your trigger. How perfect. Mm-hmm. You know, yes. and, and if you were listening to the show uh, last week, one day last week, or maybe it was a week uh-huh. before, you know, Jeannie, uh, my wife, has had yeah. some really horrendous sexual abuse in her first marriage. Okay. And we've been together 16 years now. Uh-huh. And it was just a week or a week and a half ago that she got safe enough to oh, open really? that whole file in her mind. Yeah. And share things with me. I mean, afterwards, she said, I'm just shocked at myself because I've never told anybody that stuff. Yeah, yeah. Right. And that's how it's it melts. Safe. You know, yeah. That's how it yeah. lets go. Yeah. And I suspect, you know, one of the reasons, you know, uh, all the confluences of the universe, when when we talk about how it takes five to ten years to really comprehend this work. Yeah. You know, how how has it all come together, you know? Are you out there ready to do a piece of healing? Jeannie, who's been doing this work for 16 years and really working at cleaning up that whole experience, and it just, I mean, mm-hmm. that doorway opened, and here you are. Yeah, yeah. How perfect Wonderful. Is it? Oh, my gosh. How I'm, perfect is it? Yes, it's so incredibly perfect because, actually, I haven't had pictures of my mother and father in my house for many, many years, and I... I've been doing this forgiveness work now for about a month again, and and right. they're up they're up on my mantles and everything. And I just I just realize I'm letting go of the victim story, but it's deeper than that. So this is the deeper part of it. This is and just to put their pictures up didn't. I mean, it was a stage that I'm letting go, but this is deeper. Can you hear me? Go for it. Go for it. Oh, no, no, no. That's, I just wanted to say that because even my daughter's like, why do you have their pictures up there? <laughs> my well, daughter's here's what will my happen confidant. as you heal. Huh? Here's what, wait, here's what will happen as you heal. Okay. And you may open the genetic component for your daughter to yes, be free of this as well. Okay. Is that what I hear you doing is you're developing a deeper connection with love and compassion where you can look at your father who was pretty outrageously abusive to a young girl and your mother who did the same and recognize they were just functioning out of their trauma. Yes. And as you bring their energy back in, you can help to process that in your genes so that you become free of it. They become yeah. free of it. And if both mom and dad were in that kind of right. space, who the hell knows what their parents and their parents and their parents yes. and their parents were yes. like. Yes. So I'm cleaning it up for all that the generations. Energy window, yes. yeah, and in opening that energy window, your daughter gets the benefit of it too because she gets to free yes. energetically yes. her genes from any form of abuse. Yes, yes, yes. That was my intention, and I knew it. <clears throat> Not just for me, I knew everything in my I do, I want to help my daughter heal. <clears throat> I mean I want I want this gone out of her 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 genes, you know. And so she doesn't understand what you do. She actually took me to a workshop in Dayton when I was in my forties, uh, early forties, and because and, I lived in Cincinnati and she just 
sat there patiently, but she said, I don't get this, and I'm going to go get Starbucks down the street. I'll meet you when it's over. You mean she brought you to one of my workshops? And yes. yes. How cool. Did. Well, hey, the circle returns, and maybe it's time for her to really understand it. Yes, yeah, so, well, she listens to me. I'm telling her I'm so excited that this is finally sinking in and my life is changing. And I said it's so beautiful and I can feel love in me and I have no hate for anybody. I said, you know, and and, and I mean, I, I obviously have feelings that I'm working through, but I own them. I'm not projecting them out. And, and so uh, she's like, She's listening to me now. I'm not just telling her sad stories, victim stories anymore. I said, I'm not doing it anymore, Michelle. I will not do it. I won't tell a victim story ever again. And what a perfect setup. Yeah. Hey, Michelle, remember that workshop you took me to so many years ago? No, I, she hears well, about it. She goes, I don't remember. Right? That's her MO. Well, well, that's okay. But, well, and that's the MO of people who've been sexually abused. So that may still come to light with her, too. It wouldn't surprise me. Right. Yeah. So, so and and one of the reasons people run, run, run. One of the people reason people use drugs. One of the reasons people keep busy, which is the most common drug on the planet. The reason why people rage and scream and all the things they do, is because they're running away from something inside of themselves. Yes, and I know. And you're turning around and facing yeah. it. And when yes. you turn around and face it, it dissolves. Yeah. Because yeah. now it's just a memory. Yeah. But if we never process through the memory then it yes. becomes a motive for behavior in the future. Yes. So here's my other suggestion. Okay. That you might ask Michelle, maybe the first worksheet that you do around this whole situation. Okay. After you've finished your four hours of writing. Yes. Might be to sit Michelle down and ask her to be the space and hold the space for you to go through the first retreat you do out of that writing. Okay. Oh, wow. And perhaps, and then perhaps, as you write the responsibility communication, you'll make a copy of the guidelines, make a copy of the sample letters for her, and ask okay. her for feedback. Is there anything else you see that I could put in here and do? And she'll just be walking right through the whole process with you. I mean, how cool is that? I w okay, so give her a copy of the responsibility communication. I would suggest you print for her. I mean, especially since she took you to one of my workshops so many years ago. It's yes. like, okay, sweetie, here it comes, full circle. Here. No, I wanted something to send to her. <laughs> Is that what you said? Perfect. Send it to her? Yeah. Okay. And it's, give her a copy of the, the communication rules worksheet. Give her a yes. copy of, of the two sample uh, responsibility communication letters. Okay. Ask her to go over them and support you in writing the letter to uh -huh. this fellow that you're going to be oh. sharing it with. Okay, and, 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 go, oh, and help you. me She'll write. And build a and, whole new set of brain cells. And help and me write. The, the, and, help, and give me feedback about the, the, the worksheet I'm going to write for the guy? Absolutely. And or okay. sit there and do, the, the, I'm, I'm suggesting that the first worksheet that you do after you finish the four hours of writing if she's available, ask her to be there and be holding the space for you, as you're going to ask this gentleman to as well. To be here at my house? Well, here, there, wherever it is. I don't know, a restaurant at her house, your house. Just that you invite her to be the one who holds the space for you to do your first big piece of work around this issue after writing for that four-hour period on the mind shifter. Yes. Uh, all right, so, she, yes, she's in Cincinnati. I'm in Phoenix, so she's not going to be in person, but she can hold oh, space oh, for oh, me. Oh, okay. Yeah. She can, can hold, hold space. Huh? You know, there's Zoom. You can do Zoom for free. With, with yeah. Ron's going to be here helping me do the work at the same time? Sounds like a plan to me. With my daughter doing the worksheet and him? I mean, me doing the worksheet with that, my daughter is that, and Ron is that, your, is that is that your guidance? That would be totally awesome. This is Ron doesn't know what's in for him when he comes over to paint. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, maybe he does. Maybe, maybe there's a part of him who knows exactly what he's doing. 
he knows I love her with everything inside of me. I talk about moving back there, and he goes, you, you, you've got a nice neighborhood. You've got a nice house. Why do you want to move back there? And I'm just like, because I, I just need to be around my daughter. He, he has a daughter, too, that he loves just as much as I do. I mean, as I love mine. So he gets it. Okay, so I appreciate uh, I, I, the gift that you're, you're giving me. It's the biggest, probably well, the biggest gift that I feel I ever got in my life. <laughs> yeah. So the other side of the equation is, I appreciate the gift you're giving me to give this to you. Because Thank you. Because that's what our culture, that's what our world needs. There's too much of this been going on for too long. Yeah. And I think your courage has probably opened the hearts of everybody who's in this community and listening to this show right now and people who will listen to this show 500 years from now will get a gift from what you've done, the courage you've shown, and the willingness. I mean, it's monumental. It's a, it's Thank a you, because it would be a gift. Tough piece of work. Thank you. And I suspect that Jeannie might have some thoughts to share with you, sweetheart. Well, this is just super powerful. Thank you so much for opening up to us, Celia. And uh, thank you. You know, being able to face it, it's you know, for so many years, I just pushed it down and pushed it down and said, you know, okay, I don't have to look at my abuser again. I don't ever have to see him again or deal with this. But it was always in there running me, even unconsciously, and drawing situations to me where I, you know, the creator was saying, hey, you need to look at this. You need to get it out of your system. You need to heal. And, uh, you know, one of the things in the recording that, you know, Dr. Tim wasn't on at the first half, and he was playing a recording uh, where he interviewed uh, Corinne Zutko. And one of the things that um, he quoted was, Rene Descartes and said, if you are a real seeker of truth, then you must at least once doubt all things. And then they went on down to say, um, I'm trying to read my notes and talk at the same time. If you ask yourself the question, do you want to heal or do you want to just fix it? And so to heal, you know, to fix it is for this guy to, you know, behave himself and not, you know, push any buttons or trigger anything. But to really heal, you have to uproot all the thoughts and and look at the anxiety and the panic and, the, you know, all those things and question everything and then replace it with love. And being able to go there um, is a big step, and you've taken that step. And I'm just, um, I'm here for you and with you and, and please drop me that email, and I'll send you back a bunch of links. Okay. All right. And breathe. I've got my computer on me here. Thank you. We are How both long did it take you, you to work through it, Jeannie? How long did it take you to work through yours? Like, I mean, have you been doing worksheets for um, how many years? Well, um, the first time that I did a workshop was in 2003, 2004. And I just did that big breakthrough last week. But okay. the events happened when I was 16, 17, 18 years old. Yeah. And so, 15 you know, years ago. Knocking it, knocking it down okay. for, you know, oh. 50 years. Oh. 50 years? Yeah. Yeah. So, you, you know, yeah. being able to be safe enough to actually look at it and work through it and be done with it. So we can move on yeah, and actually yeah. live yeah. like we're supposed to live, you know? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Like I was created to live, yeah. And, and out of remember, the workshop work that um, Jeannie's done in that regard, uh, Jeannie's got a women's workshop that she does that is, in many cases, focused on healing this whole sexual abuse issue. Okay. With women. So, a workshop okay. called Women Healing Women. And we've talked about her doing that as an intensive in the not too distant future. So, on on Zoom be, uh, though, on Zoom. Yeah, yeah it'll be, be on. Zoom. Oh, that's great. Yeah. How do I sign up? Well, I've got to schedule it first. So, um, oh. <laughs> I'll put you on the mailing list. 
<laughs> oh, yeah, I think. <laughs> but, uh, you know, also realize that when energies go into our um, physiology, into our mental, you know, whether it's mental, emotional, physical, whatever, and it creates symptoms, whether it's, you know, physical pain or whether it's mental stress or, you know, depression or whatever, as you're healing and those energies are coming back out, it may look the same. You may go through yes. feeling the depression and feeling the pain. You know, I've been what, how many years, Michael, since we did that it intensive will. in Florida, it and I will first come out to feel the same. Yeah, and so you know, I mean, I went through intense uh, hip pain for probably eight years. Okay. Um, after I first started looking at this again. And, right. you know, now that is gone. But occasionally, you know, I'll hit another layer and the hip pain will come back. And, okay. you know, just recognize that you're moving in the right direction and that yeah, the energy is moving out of you, not in you, and don't get lost in the symptoms. Uh, this reminds me, and I've thought this before, of, home, of the way you guys have the, the, the healing it be seem like the, the, that you're not healing, but you are, because it's coming out, because you're doing the work. But it reminds me of right. homeopathy. Homeopathy, it brings up the symptoms instead of repressing them, so the symptoms come up and get worse, actually, after you take Here, a homeopathic her- remedy. Yeah, you get that her- right. Her- Herring's Law of Cure. Yeah, yeah. That's exactly, Herring's Law of Cure. Herring's Law. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, so... He's the original I'm, homeopath. I'm, is he really? I was taught yep. it was Hanneman. Well, I'm not saying the only, but one of the originators and who developed the understanding of the healing process, who initiated that. Oh, I see, that. I see. Oh, oh, I see, okay. And then through naturopathy, we've expanded that to recognize that the symptoms of healing are going to happen physically, mentally, emotionally, that those yeah, energetic yeah. patterns are going to move. And the healing yeah. process looks exactly like the disease process looks and you want to be aware and conscious and stay soft and open so that those things can move rather than follow the old patterns of shutting down the breath tightening the jaw tightening the gut whatever and letting it all loosen let it open and let it go let it be removed from your structure which is forgiveness (laughs) yeah yes and I'm willing because I I I just I, I it's like I can't I can't, I, I'm not, I'm, I'm done. I'm done with living this way. I'm done with being. Yay. The <laughs> world done. rejoices. <laughs> millions yet unborn will benefit from the work you do. Oh, uh, yes, millions will. When we all do our work, million, we, we resonate in other people the strength to do it. Is that exactly. true? Exactly. Yes. Right on track. Now, thank you so much. I'm, just quickly, because we've just got a minute or so left, sure. and I'm just going to throw out when the symptoms start to move, what are the signals? When you become symptomatic, how do you tell you're in the healing process? And, and Jeannie, maybe you could send her the links to those uh, shows where we did uh, a healing crisis, where you had conversations about healing crisis. But there are four things to watch for. When, when, when you become symptomatic, to make sure you're in a healing process rather than a disease process, first question you ask yourself is, have I been doing more and more of the right things? Well, obviously you are. So that's check my yes. number one. Right. Two, just before these symptoms occurred, and they may be physical, they may be mental, they may be emotional, did you reach a new level of vitality and aliveness? At a new level of vitality, energetic, you can dig into the next depth of what needs to be cleared out. What Third is your question. definition of a level of vitality, though? Just your strength. You know, I mean, I go to bed at night, and I'm like, man, I feel so good. I, <laughs> I haven't felt this good in 10 years. Wow. <laughs> I'm on top yes, of the yes. And then the next morning, you wake up, and you wonder if anybody got the number of the Mack truck going through your room during the night because you're lower than a snake's belly. What yeah, happened? Well, it hit, What's it wrong? Hit this Nothing's that wrong. I hold on. Hold yeah. on. Ho, 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 ho. Okay. No, I want to finish these thoughts. So if you'd hold off, we've only got about 40 yes. seconds. And oh, sure. Come up. So, okay. so when I hit that new level of vitality, the structure says, ah, the old stuff you've hidden away, we can now handle that layer, and the energy is going to start to move, and it's going to start to come up physically, mentally, emotionally. So that's the third thing, or the second thing you ask yourself. 
third thing is you look at what's happening with your elimination. In a healing process, there's an increase in elimination. In a disease process, there's a restriction in elimination. And we're talking about all the limb organs, the bowel, the urinary tract, skin, the mucous membranes, lungs, all of it. The fourth okay. question you ask yourself when you become symptomatic and you want to watch out for this is, okay. What's the drug I use when this happened initially to keep it suppressed? Because as the healing process happens, literal, literally the energy patterns of whatever drug was used in the past, whatever yeah. it is, rage, fear, alcohol, busyness, whatever it is, the energetic signature of that is locked in with the trauma that's being released. And when the energetic signature starts to fall, come out, there could be a tendency to fall back into the drug. So stay conscious, keep doing the right things, let go of the drug and process through it. And that way you'll have the best year yet of your eternal life, and that's what we're here to support. And the show is going to cut us off in probably about two seconds. So I'm going to say thanks for your courage, and stick with us, keep us posted. We're here to support you. <laughs> 